good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to you as we meet together uh, this afternoon for the, the service of Thanksgiving for the life of Ruby Lucas. Uh, Alistair did say to me uh, in preparation for today, you can call my mum Ruby in the service, but I, I don't think that's going to work. It will probably be Mrs. Lucas uh, most of the time, as it, as it always was. But it's good to have you with us um, here this afternoon. Uh, you're very warmly welcome here at Crumlin EPC. And let me take the opportunity at the start of our service to express our sympathies, of course, at this time uh, to uh, the family, uh, to Mrs. Lucas's children, Mildred, Alistair, Avril, Melwyn, and Darren. Also, Mrs. Lucas's sister, Hazel, and of course, the wider family circle as well. Uh, including Mrs. Lucas's 16 grandchildren and 31 great-grandchildren. Uh, it's great that uh, so many can be here today uh, for this service. And for all who grieve, we trust that as we meet together this afternoon uh, for this funeral service, that this will be a time of comfort and of consolation as we hear God's word, as we draw near to him, even as he draws near to us. This morning, we were able to have a, a short a private family burial that has already taken place uh, about half past 11 this morning. It was good to be uh, gathered together with the family by the graveside for a, a brief service there, hearing God's word, uh, coming to him in prayer and, and singing his praises. And as well as this, we gather this afternoon once again uh, to hear the word of God and to sing praises to him, uh, reflect on the life of Mrs. Lucas, uh, bring our, our prayers before the Lord uh, and seek the comfort that is found in Christ. As we begin our time together, I want to read a few verses uh, from John chapter 11 uh, to focus our minds as we gather uh, to worship God. These verses, I'm sure, will be well known to many of us. It follows the death of Lazarus. Jesus then arrives on the scene a few days later. And we read these words in John chapter 11. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Great words of assurance for us as Jesus speaks there to Martha, assuring her that the answer to the, the problem of death is not merely some day in the future, though there is a day in the future when the dead will be raised. But ultimately, the answer to the problem of death is a person, Jesus himself who is the resurrection and the life let's pray together at the start of our service our father as we meet together for this funeral service now we do thank you that even in the midst of sadness and mourning there is comfort to be found in your son jesus christ and as we have just heard from those verses in john chapter 11 he is the resurrection and the life and those who believe in him though they die yet shall they live and forevermore we thank you that jesus then demonstrated the truth of that claim in raising lazarus from the dead we thank you that by his own death and resurrection jesus has conquered sin and death and hell on behalf of his people so that in him we can have certain hope of eternal life. And we pray that this afternoon, as we meet for this service, that you would comfort our hearts with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Draw near to us, we pray, 
because we ask all of these things in Jesus precious name amen Hopefully, as you entered the, the church this afternoon, you were handed a service sheet, and each of the hymns that the family has chosen uh, are printed inside that service sheet. We're very thankful, especially to Jean, for, for playing, to us, uh, playing for us today uh, in this service. And uh, the first hymn you'll find there on the inside cover of the service sheet. When my life work is ended, and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side. We'll stand and sing these words together. seat.
you have a copy of the scriptures with you, uh, please would you turn with me to Psalm 23 as we read some verses now from God's Word. Psalm 23, well-known psalm, Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank God for his word to us. Uh, The family have uh, provided uh, some thoughts for us uh, as we reflect on uh, the life of Mrs. Lucas, Mary Rebecca Jones, uh, known as Ruby, was born on the 24th of August in 1930, the fourth of eight children. Uh, She was brought up on a farm outside the small village of Carnteel, in County Tyrone, where she also there went to school. Uh, She left school in June 1944 and went to work in the office for Reeds of Carnteel, aged 14. She worked there for the next five years until her marriage in June 1949 to Samuel Lucas. Together, they had five children, Mildred, Alistair, Avril, Melwyn, and Darren. Ruby had come to know the Lord Jesus as her personal saviour as a young woman, and as she raised her own children, she was diligent in bringing them up in the gospel. The children have shared how they had memories of her reading and praying with them each evening as they gathered around the old electric fire before bedtime. Also recollections of being sent to gospel meetings both near and far. Mrs. Lucas worked on the farm. In many ways, she was the driving force of the farm, I'm told, often milking the cows and feeding the hens on her own. She also kept the farm records. The accountant said that he wished that all books were as easy to do as she had all the details in good order. And then following the death of Samuel in June 1992, Mrs. Lucas then reached out to help and work in a number of gospel ministries, including Eshkol Trust, Island Outreach, where she was the resident cook. Mrs. Lucas was also actively involved in the life of the church here at Crumlin EPC, serving in various different ministries. And as well as that, never missing Lord's Day worship, never missing the midweek prayer meeting. Then at around 80 years of age, Mrs. Lucas's health began to decline. In February 2014, she moved to Rosemary Lodge Care Home up in Antrim. And then more recently, in December 2022, uh, to Lakeview Nursing Home uh, here in Crumlin, just up the road from where we are now. And there she remained until her death. Uh, The family would like to to thank uh, the staff at both of these homes for the care that they provided for Mrs. Lucas during the time that she was there. And as we look back on uh, her life, uh, we give thanks to God for Mrs. Lucas's life and in particular for his grace in saving her. We're going to turn to our God in prayer now bringing our our prayers of thanksgiving and as well as this, our intercession for the family and loved ones 
at this difficult time. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, having just heard this brief account of the life of Mrs. Lucas, we turn to you now in prayer. And we want to give to you our thanksgiving for all the good that was achieved throughout the course of Mrs. Lucas's life. We thank you for her upbringing, for the family that you blessed her with, for her marriage to Samuel and the gift of children, and then in subsequent years, grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. We thank you for her friends. We thank you for her life of faithful work in various different roles. And as we look back today, we can do so on a life lived to the full, with so much to give thanks for. And yet above all of this, Father, we give you our thanks for your work of grace in her life, bringing her to know you at a young age, and then how that work of grace continued throughout her life, how you worked through Mrs. Lucas to impact the lives of so many others. Even as we've heard already, her diligence in raising her children in the truths of your word, her faithfulness in serving the work of the gospel, her faithfulness in the life of the church, her devotion to worship, her prayerful attitude, her zeal for sharing the good news with those around her. <coughs> Father, we thank you that you brought Mrs. Lucas to know you through your son, Jesus. And we thank you and praise you that in him she came to know the joy of sins forgiven and the hope of heaven. And we praise you that even now she has been welcomed into the presence of the Saviour in whom she trusted and whom she served so faithfully over many years. Father, we pray for the family at this time during these sad days. We pray that you would comfort them as only you can the God of all comfort. We pray that in these days especially, the truths of the gospel would bring joy to their hearts as they reflect on the sure and steadfast hope that is found in Jesus. And Father, we pray that this afternoon, as we hear your word both read and preached, that you would work in all of our hearts by your Spirit, showing us your Son. May our assurance in him be strengthened. And for any here who do not yet know Jesus as their Saviour, would you draw them to him irresistibly so that they too might share in that same faith that dwelt in Mrs. Lucas. And so our Father, we bring these, our prayers to you, and we ask all of these things in the strong and the precious name of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing our second hymn now, which again you can find in the service sheet. Please do turn there. Face to face with Christ my Saviour. Face to face, what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. We'll stand and sing together.
please take a seat. And if you have a, a Bible with you, you may want to turn to that psalm which I read a, a few minutes ago earlier on in our service this afternoon, Psalm 23. We're going to focus our minds on this wonderful psalm uh, for a few minutes now. This morning, as the, the family gathered at the graveside for the short committal service, I spoke there briefly about one of the, the very first visits, if not the first visit, I had with Mrs. Lucas after I became the minister here, uh, just a, a few weeks after she had moved into the care home up in Antrim. And on that occasion, as I was saying at the graveside this morning, I read to her from John chapter 14. Uh, she just moved from one home to another, uh, was longing to be back in the old home. Uh, but as we read and, and talked about John 14 and prayed about John 14, we looked forward to the, the final home uh, where Mrs. Lucas now is. That was my first or one of my first visits with Mrs. Lucas. And I want to speak this afternoon about the very last visit I had with Mrs. Lucas just a, a few days ago. And uh, I read to her from Psalm 23. And it seems to be an appropriate passage, therefore, for us to turn to this afternoon. It's a wonderful psalm, perhaps the, the best known psalm of all. And in it, King David is rejoicing in the fact that the Lord is his shepherd. The shepherd who cares for him in countless ways, as we shall see. And of course, we know that the Lord who is our shepherd, is Jesus himself. Jesus makes that very clear when he says to us in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. And in this psalm, we're given a beautiful poetic description of the Lord Jesus' care for his people as their shepherd. And I'm actually only going to speak on one verse from this psalm. And that is the, the last verse of the psalm. David says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from that one verse, I want to point out a number of things about the Lord Jesus' care for his people as their good shepherd. And so here's the first thing that we're going to notice. The Lord's care is sure. The Lord's care is sure. Now, whenever I visited Mrs. Lucas and it came to reading the scriptures to her, it was never a straightforward thing to do because she used to interrupt so often. And don't mean in a, not in a rude way at all, but as you were reading whatever passage it was that day, she would chime in from time to time with her agreement with what that passage was saying. You'd be partway through the, the reading and you'd suddenly hear this voice saying, that's right, yes indeed, that's right. Must be where Alistair gets it from, uh, I think. And uh, I remember that final visit with Mrs. Lucas. By this stage, of course, she was very frail, very weary. And I'd spent some time talking to her. And then I reached over and picked up from the chest of drawers Mrs. Lucas's old Bible. And I turned to this psalm, Psalm 23. And throughout the reading of the psalm, there was a few interruptions. But I got to this particular word at the start of the final verse. Surely. And at that point, Mrs. Lucas piped up repeating the word back to me, surely, surely. And it struck me as I was standing there by her bedside, waiting to finish the verse, how, how characteristic of Mrs. Lucas that word was. Even as I say it now, you can imagine Mrs. Lucas saying it, can't you? Surely, surely. It's a wonderful word, isn't it? The Lord's care is sure. This is not wishful thinking. This is not conjecture. This is not blind faith. 
This is not crossing your fingers and, and hoping against all odds that things are going to work out okay for you in the end. No, this is solid assurance, a, a certain hope. Those who come under the care of the good shepherd who is Jesus are guaranteed of that care towards them. And it is what David wants us to grasp, isn't it, by placing that word right at the start of this verse. He wants us to know this, the Lord's care is sure. And it was a, a wonderful thing to, to see that the same assurance that David displays in this psalm was so clearly displayed in Mrs. Lucas's life as well. The utmost confidence and conviction with which she held her faith, her assurance of salvation. The Lord's care is sure. And you might ask, well, what does that care look like? And that's what the rest of this verse is there to tell us. And secondly, I want us to notice this. The Lord's care is gracious. His care is gracious. Look at what David says, if you've got it open in front of you, in the next words of the psalm. He describes the Lord's care with these two words, goodness and mercy. As the good shepherd, Jesus cares for his sheep. He's good to them. He's merciful to them. And we can sum it up like this. His care is gracious. And in saying that, David is looking back of, of all that he has said so far in the psalm about the Lord's care for him. And again, if you have the psalm open in front of you, you can glance over those first five verses of the psalm and count up the ways in which David says that the Lord cares for him. He provides for him. I shall not want. He gives rest to him. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He refreshes him. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores him spiritually. He restoreth my soul. He leads him. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. By his constant presence, he comforts him, even when facing death itself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And he welcomes him, even whilst other people oppose him. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And all of that, David is summing up in that final verse where he describes the Lord's care for him as goodness and mercy. The Lord's care is gracious. And where do we find that goodness and mercy of God towards his people? Well, as I've mentioned already, in John chapter 10 in the New Testament, Jesus takes the imagery of this psalm and he applies it to himself. It is in him as the good shepherd and because of what he has done, supremely in dying in the place of his people, taking the punishment for all of their sin before rising again, that we find this goodness and mercy and grace of God towards his people. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Then a little later he adds, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Lord's care is gracious, pouring out his goodness and his mercy upon his people. And then here's the, the third thing that I want us to notice. And that is that the Lord's care is personal. His care is personal. It was Martin Luther who, who said, the life of Christianity consists 
in the possessive pronouns. That's a great line, isn't it? The life of Christianity consists in possessive pronouns. And you could say the same about Psalm 23. The life of this psalm consists in the, the personal and the possessive pronoun, pronouns throughout it. In other words, it's not simply enough for David to say that the Lord is a shepherd or the Lord is even the shepherd. And David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. It's all the way through the psalm, isn't it? And, and notice in this final verse of the psalm in particular, that personal pronoun right in the middle of it. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. And you see, David is saying that he himself, he personally, has come under the care of the Lord who is now his shepherd. And he has entrusted himself to the care of the Lord. And therefore he now benefits from that care, the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God towards him. And we've already heard this afternoon in the tribute of how Mrs. Lucas came to know the Lord for herself when she was a young woman. She recognised that the Lord Jesus is the Good Shepherd, under whose care the goodness and the mercy of God is found and experienced. And she put her faith in him. She recognised that she needed a saviour, one who had given his life for her, laying down his life for her, dying for her sins, taking her punishment, before then rising again from the dead. She recognised that only in him could she be forgiven and have eternal life with God. And so, by grace, she put her faith in Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And I don't know exactly what age she was when she trusted in Jesus. And I don't know how much she knew about the Christian faith prior to that. And yet I do know that on the day that she trusted in Jesus for the first time, she owned the personal and possessive pronouns of the Christian faith for herself. And she could say, the Lord is my shepherd. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me. The Lord's care is personal. And I know that more than anything else, Mrs. Lucas would want me to say to you this afternoon, is it personal to you as well? Have you recognised that Jesus is this good shepherd who laid down his life so that his sheep could be forgiven and then rose again so that they could have everlasting life? And have you put your trust in him so that you can say, the Lord is my shepherd? The Lord's care is personal. Is it personal to you? And then fourthly, I want us to notice this. The Lord's care is lifelong. His care is lifelong. David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I wonder when David wrote this psalm. I wonder how old he was when he wrote these words. I wonder how many more years of his life still stretched before him. Of course, David didn't know that either. And yet he was sure of this, that as long as he lived, there would never be a single day when he was outside the care of the Lord as his shepherd. The Lord would care for him every day with constant supply of that goodness and mercy towards him. And he would do so through thick and thin, on good days and on bad days. And David had some good days and David had some bad days for sure. But the Lord's care is lifelong. And Mrs. Lucas proved that as well, didn't she? She came to know the Lord as a young woman, as we've heard. And when she put her faith 
in Jesus, though she did not know it herself, there were many, many years of her life still stretching before her, right until her death just a few days ago in her 93rd year. And yet there was not a day that went by in all of the intervening years when the goodness and mercy of God did not follow her. And that was evident, wasn't it, to those who knew her, her family, her friends, the church, many of us gathered here this afternoon. The way that Mrs. Lucas delighted in the gospel, the way that she loved to teach it to her children as they grew up, the way in which she served in so many different ministries over the years, the way in which she was so keen to tell others the gospel, pointing them to Jesus, urging them to put their faith in him, the way that she was so faithful in her attendance at church and at the prayer meeting, and the way that even in these last few years when her mind became less clear than it had been, yet there was still that clarity and that that confidence when the scriptures were opened and read. And of course, there were good days and bad days along the way. The, the joy of marriage and children and family life. Also the sadness of, of widowhood. The industrious days working on the farm. And then also the frustrating days when old age prevented her from being as active or as independent as she would have liked to have been. The days when she felt happy and the days when she felt down. And yet through it all, there was never a day when the Lord's goodness and mercy did not follow her. And it's a great comfort to know that, isn't it? That if we put our faith in Jesus, that whatever we're going through in life, even in times of bereavement like this, not a single day goes by that the Lord is not showing his goodness and mercy to us. The Lord's care is lifelong. And then finally, the Lord's care is eternal. The Lord's care is eternal. That's how David finishes the psalm, isn't it? He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He knows that the Lord's care for him is never going to end. Even after the days of his life are over, he will go to be with the Lord. He will dwell in the Lord's house even as we were thinking about this morning by the graveside as we heard those words from john chapter 14 jesus assuring his disciples that there is a place for them in his father's house that he will prepare for them and it's the same confidence here isn't it in in psalm 23 david knows even after the days of his life are over he will go to be with the lord he will dwell in his house he will enjoy closer fellowship with god And it will be forever. And it's a great comfort to us today, isn't it? Yes, we grieve. Yes, the family mourns for the loss of Mrs. Lucas. And yet we do not grieve as those with no hope. Because we know where Mrs. Lucas is now. She is with her Saviour. She is with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Those wonderful words we sang before this sermon uh, are now true for her face to face with Christ my Saviour she's dwelling in the house of the Lord and she will be there with him forever rejoicing in her Saviour rejoicing in the goodness and the mercy that he is pouring out upon her eternally the Apostle Paul writes that to be part and be with Christ is far better. Life without sickness, life without sin, life without pain, life without death, life without end, and life with Jesus forever. What a great final verse to have been able to read to Mrs. Lucas on that last visit with her. And what a great verse for us to focus on our thoughts upon today as we consider the care that Jesus the Good Shepherd shows to his people. His care is sure, his care is gracious, his care is personal, his care is lifelong, 
and his care is eternal. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus. Thank you for the care that he, as the Good Shepherd, shows to his people. We thank you that as Christians we can be sure of it and that it is all of grace. It is all your goodness and your mercy poured out on those who don't deserve it. Even that Jesus would lay down his life for his sheep, dying in their place that they might live. We thank you that that care is lifelong, following us every day of our lives. And we thank you for the way in which that was seen in Mrs. Lucas's long life, a life lived under the care of the Good Shepherd each day. And we thank you that his care lasts forever when we will go to be with Christ, which is far better, and dwell in your house forevermore. Father, we thank you for the comfort that all of this brings to us today, even as we grieve for the loss of Mrs. Lucas. And what a comfort it is for us to know that the truths of this psalm were true in her life personally, and they're true of her now in glory. And may they be true for all of us personally today. May we put our trust in Jesus so that we can say for ourselves, the Lord is my shepherd, and in his precious name we pray these things. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn now, which again is in the service sheet, so please do turn there and we'll stand and sing together. There's a land that is fairer than day and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. We'll stand and sing together.
we close, let me just mention that there are refreshments served in the church hall after the service, and you're warmly invited to stay behind for that. Uh, the hall is right at the other end of the building. Just head out of the doors at the back here and keep going, and you'll arrive there at the other end of the building. It'd be great to have you around uh, for that, and the family would uh, appreciate uh, the time to spend time with you there as well. But as we close uh, the service now, please remain standing and receive these words of benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Please be seated.